Well, hey guys, welcome back. We are uh, selfie style here in BrassTrains.com's headquarters in Ocala, Florida area. Very, very cool headquarters. Uh, we're going to take a look around and show you what they've got to offer and what's behind the scenes outside of just their awesome website at BrassTrains.com where they sell lots of new and used brass and even some plastic items. Isn't that right, Dan? That's right, but not too much plastic items, mainly all brass. So welcome to the yep. land of brass. Yep, this is Dan. He is the the CEO, or you have a title, Sounds president. Fancy. We'll take it. Yeah, CEO gets tossed around, but he he, right. he warrants it more than most. All right. Um, so he, well, thanks for visiting. Thanks. Glad uh, to have you. Appreciate you guys taking the time, and uh, he's going to show us around this awesome campus i call it because there's several buildings here and we'll see what it's about sounds good james follow up good. like you james you know this hobby is not just a business this is a passion so these a lot of what's on display is for sale and some of it is just because we need a spot to put it but a lot of these are items that i especially liked uh things that I hope to run on a layout one day, although I don't know if that'll happen. But it's fun to be able to display it and uh, show it off a little bit. So Dan, the um, theme I'm noticing through here is there's a lot of railroad memorabilia, so kind of drives that you have a bigger passion to this than just the sale of brass models. So do you have like a personal interest uh, in terms of like railroad and things like that yeah of course and I think as you probably found out when you visit guys that do this and then you see some of the cool stuff they have it's hard not to get bit by the bug so a lot of the railroad ania is from collections that we've acquired and just kept it for ourselves. and so there's a lot of stories behind a lot of these pieces but it, it's great to collect some of that too because that's what drives this whole hobby is a passion to make it as real as possible so there's nothing like the real thing. This yeah, is our yeah. packing area. Uh, so when you order something, this is where a piece or one of the game, make sure it's delivered safely because there's nothing worse than ordering that train you've been looking for your whole life and getting it damaged. So we do our absolute best to make sure that doesn't happen. And over here, James, is where uh, we keep the stock. So I know a lot of the viewers may have seen it on the website, but it's kind of neat to see Ooh. in person. Uh, what you are shopping for so you can go online to get photos of anything in any of these boxes But uh, this is where we put the items in numerical order and get them ready to uh, Pick and pull for our packing. No. Okay Now everybody likes to see of course the room where we have things listed But the real fun when people visit is the stock rooms of items that aren't listed yet So you can show your viewers around a little bit. These are items that we're still uh, planning to list we have to go through each one, test it, clean it up if necessary. Sometimes they're new in the box, but we still uh, have to make little adjustments, get them photographed, and get them on our site. So we got a lot of work to do. This is our repair area. Uh, Roland, of course, does a lot of repairs, but Marty's our full-time repair guy. You want to wave to the camera? <laughs> As you can see, we have a full assortment of uh, Northwest Short Line parts. Uh, all sorts of different uh, gearboxes, motors, screws, uh, extra parts that we've acquired from uh, the PFM collection, uh, from various co uh, just collections we acquire through the years. And then the tricky part is keeping it all organized so when you actually need a piece, we can find it. So that's what we try to do here. Uh, but we're, we're pretty happy to uh, be able to rescue almost anything and get it running again. Well, this is where the uh, listing happens. So, and customer service. So for some of our customers, they'll recognize Nathan, either from the expo or on the phone. Yeah, they'll recognize my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course over here is Dave, tirelessly listening away. Hey Dave. Good job. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Got any, here. got any UP brass to sell me? Uh, there's a couple pieces. Passenger? <laughs> <laughs> got this uh, beautiful, just about to go up, uh, not rail detector, I'm sorry, DC-3. Oh, cool. Beautiful later run factory uh, Overland, actually. Very neat. Runs very nice, actually. Nice. And then from listing, after everything's tested, cleaned, uh, up the 
hundred mm percent -hmm. as far as repair goes. Then we get it over here to Brandon. How's it going, Hello, Brandon? Good. How are you? Hey, see, Brandon used to taking photos, not yeah. being photographed, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he shoots all our photos, so this guy deserves a gold star because somehow he doesn't go crazy doing that all day. Yeah. And so far, I hate to say this on camera, but I don't think he's ever dropped anything. No. Oh well. So, uh oh, better find some wood. Yeah, that's better find some wood to knock on. <laughs> yeah. These are these are composite. It'll be close enough. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> even when we eat, we feel like we have to be surrounded by trains. So actually, we had a visitor one day. And he walked in here and he says, hey, I rebuilt that engine. So he was visiting us. He was a big brass collector. And he actually worked on the restoration of this particular model. So that was pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it almost looks like a painting, but it's really a photograph, right? Yeah, I think it's a big blown up photograph made yeah. to look like a mural. Cool. If you were at our show or seen any of our uh, Monday Morning Express room of Ron, he's our resident master builder. So most people think this is just an amazing model, but it's not a scale model. It's actually scaled up from a brass two truck PFM Shea. So everything you see on here is actually like you were looking through an eye loop and you could see this model. Like if you can see the Katie coupler, you can see the like exaggerated wood grain, the diamond plate, everything on this, every rivet, everything here you'll find on that model. So that's what's kind of cool about this. Our goal was to uh, paint this brass, have solder marks, put a big open frame motor in here. So it just brings guys back to the days of seeing it. And Ron built everything from scratch, the beveled gears, all of this. And it's meant to replicate exactly how the model would run, not the prototype. So it's, it's a, it was gonna be for our show that got canceled because of the hurricane. The brass just got bigger show. This was like our mascot. Brass just got bigger, literally. So we have all these projects that start. I don't know where they all germinate from. We get an idea. Ron's a bad influence on me. One day we said, boy, it would be kind of cool if we did a city in the window, like you were looking out a window over a city. And so that's where this idea was born from. And also the effect here is you're starting to scale down as you get into our museum. So like right now it doesn't feel like it, but we're at three quarter scale. We're looking out over one inch scale. That fades into the background. And this room actually will lower the roof and it'll kind of have that Disney effect where it, it gives us a feel that we're entering something different. And this is all about brass, but we do, as you mentioned earlier, James, we have a lot of uh, railroad anio. We have a lot of drum heads and just different things uh, that we've accumulated throughout the years. These paintings are really special to me. These are original Howard Foggs that were done on the cover of the PFM uh, magazines. And each one of these actually, which was very unusual for Howard Fogg, he used a model. So he did this painting from the model instead of the real train. So it, it has a deep history uh, in brass, but also probably the most famous railroad painter of all time. And we were fortunate enough to acquire those originals from the PFM collection. And then as we come through here, you'll just see now this, this half of the room, we're working on other things, but this half of the room here is our brass museum. You'll see many unique pieces that can't be found elsewhere. Uh, these are mock-ups of the original PFM catalogs that had hand pencil drawings done over like a vellum overlay. And then the photograph carefully cut out. So it's really neat to see the work that went into that. This is a prototype fine art model. Uh, the only one unpainted that we're aware of uh, that was ever done. It was owned by one of the uh, fellows that worked on that project in Europe. And lots of little interesting things with some history. This is a, a very rare piece here. That's River Rossi. They didn't do very many brass engines, but that's a River Rossi brass engine. They, they set out to do, I think, like 500 of them, and they found it was so intensive, I think they got to 100, and they're incredibly hard to find. We have some live steam. Uh, we've got some hand-built pieces. Uh, we've got just some all-time great pieces there with the Overland Heritage Series. That's a beautiful set. W&R pieces, last run. Uh, the great Overland bridges. And just a lot of things to look at and appreciate. Uh, many of these things are from my personal collection. Some are for sale, some are, it would take a lot to pry them out of our hands. But we enjoy being able to show them off uh, to people who come through. We have some hand-built models here. We have the uh, number ones of the Glacier Park Big Boy project. 
as well as an unpainted one, which is kind of neat to see it in that state. So more Overland O scale and some of their HO scale structures, which are a lot of fun. And there's just a, a lot of neat things to look at. We have some original paintings. These are Winfield. These two, these other ones are Smith, who's not as well known, but Winfield's a fantastic painter. So we're happy to have some of those originals uh, in our collection, as well as an original El Capitan, a drum head there. And see, we pick up all kinds of crazy things, even a switch stand. You know, people get this stuff and it seems like a great idea when we're there to, to take it and tell you try to lug this thing back. And then I'll end up with a few people yelling at me why I bought it, but we're glad to have it here. Like the neon UP sign. Yeah. And we got to take it and show you what Ron's working on now. Okay. So after all these things we showed you, the giant shea, the city and the window, the museum, which are all Ron pieces of art. Hey, Ron, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah, well. <laughs> Finally, when Ron first came on, the goal was to build an HO city of New York in the 1930s. Uh, I personally built a lot of the skyscrapers. Now, some of these buildings we've acquired through collections. A uh, few we had commissioned for us, and Ron's going to put them all together in one masterpiece. This whole layout is going to be modular, but it won't look like it's modular. All the seams are at diagonals. It's going to have an operating subway system, an elevated system. Uh, the Empire State Building actually has, what, about 20 more stories to go in there that we just have off now for the ease of moving it around. And Ron, tell us a little bit about some of the challenges with this project. Well, we want to have... Uh street level as you see but uh, we're kind of doing this wedding cake thing because we have some some of the biggest issues is that the buildings aren't true scale meaning the Empire State Building should be pretty much close to the ceiling so what we have to do is jack up the ground to make it more compatible to the buildings around it that's the biggest challenge and then underneath of course the subway system because of jacking that street up and that being so far down below compensating the distances in between has, has really been quite a challenge. Yeah, and a lot of uh, your viewers, James, will know that most HO building kits are compressed because if you did it true scale, they wouldn't really look right or they would take so much space. It just, it doesn't have the same flair to it. So, but what happens sometimes is maybe modelers don't put the right effort into the layout of the model the streets the what goes on underneath and so that's what ron's really trying to accomplish is get that infrastructure in there with like even little on ramps and off ramps and little trolleys and the stuff sometimes it gets missed even subways you know it's very rare that we see a subway properly uh executed where you know there's proper in and out traffic flow so we're just sitting here today talking about traffic flow right like how would people get on? How would they get off if this is an interchange? So it's really fun to tackle this from that standpoint a little bit. And then we're, we're not too carried away with getting everything exactly prototypical. We just want to have a lot of fun and we want people to be able to look at it and just kind of be taken to a, a different place when it's done. Nice Florida rain shower outside, thunderstorm actually. And in here in a separate building is the basketball court. And it has some official uses too. Back in the back, you can see there are several buildings that they're working on, skyscrapers actually. Those aren't Legos, are they, Dan? They are Legos. Are they are Legos? Yeah, so Lego skyscrapers. Dan has a bit of a passion for Legos. So a lot of different Lego models there and then a roundhouse as well. Some pretty cool stuff here in the basketball gymnasium or court area Are you ready for your one -on -one? yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're taller but we'll see how that shot looks <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna kill me in crocs i'm in crocs <laughs> oh, hey, why do you think i asked <laughs> <laughs> yeah. here's the conference room where they have different get-togethers or meetings a lot of railroad memorabilia in here the missouri pacific lines is off the front of an f unit is that right dan i believe it might be a pa or pa sorry so pretty cool. You'll see stuff like that all throughout their campus here. A bunch of railroad memorabilia. And Ron built the uh, Daily Planet. Very cool. So here we are in the Monday Morning Express studio. 
This is where Dan, Roland, and their guests actually film the Monday Morning Express, which you can find on BrassTrains.com. It's a real professional setup here, very cool. And also, as we pan around, you've got all the editing here, and you've also got some of the technical sides of things, the clinics and things they do on camera and off camera are done right here as well. You got a spray booth. So this is a very expanded facility. This is a separate building entirely. All right, I've been called to Dan's office. Now I don't know where to find him. Is he in here? Ooh, Marty McFly, Nautilus, all kinds of cool stuff. But where's Dan? Oh, there he is. Hey, James, I called you back here for a job interview, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear you already got one. So, yeah, yeah, welcome to my office. I like to collect all kinds of weird little knickknacks, mainly trains. Uh, but, you know, I do have this other, like, weird little secret passion that I grew up with. And I do with my boys. So, you know, everybody needs a secret door in their office, right? Yeah. Of course, it's not going to be so secret anymore, is it? <laughs> no. But back here we have my other little uh, hobby, which is Legos. Oh, cool. And uh, Legos is really something that I enjoyed in my childhood. And uh, we did a train layout with the boys, hoping to kind of get them into model trains that way. I'm sure in your travels you've seen lots of these, like, Lego layouts at train shows, too. Mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what got us into it. Love the pirate ships. I used to do that as a kid. Yes, I see you, you feel it. You you yep. grew up with this stuff too. Yep. Nice collection, Dan. I want to take the time to uh, say thanks for showing my viewers and I everything here in Florida. Beautiful campus. Amazing. Uh, I thought initially it wouldn't be as large as it actually is. I <laughs> thought a little bit of time would do it, but you really need a lot of time to really see it. I should have put uh, probably a five-day park hopper on this place, but <laughs> well, that means you got to come back. Yep, but uh, we'll we'll have to see you here in a year or two and come visit again. But thanks for showing everybody your campus. It's an awesome hobby that we're all engaged in, and you do a great job, basically bringing these brass models to market when other place other people wouldn't be able to find them necessarily. And uh, it's a great website at BrassTrains.com. So thanks. Well, thanks, James. We love what we do. You're welcome back. And I'll get you that uh, Monday Morning Express mug before you leave. All right, thanks.